What's the best way to use your DJI goggles to receive signals from one of your analog quads? Today, we're gonna to look at what might be the best answer to that question, the British drone industry's Digi Adapter. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. If you've got DJI goggles, then you probably already know that you can use the AV input on the goggles to receive signal from a standard Fat Shark module, like a Rapid Fire, TBS Fusion, Foxer Wildfire, any of those modules. And the cheapest way to make that happen is this little guy. This is the Uru AV adapter. It costs about 15 bucks. Comes with a power cable and an AV cable, although I can't find my AV cable. I lost it, but it's a little spiral AV cable. It's pretty cute. And it bolts to this head strap bracket and plugs into your goggles. And that's fine for 15 bucks. There's not too much to complain about here, but it doesn't look cool. Do your DJI goggles ever look cool? I mean, they can look cooler than, you know, it doesn't look really polished. It's just kind of hanging out there with all the electronics hanging out. And the biggest complaint I have about it is it doesn't do anything to hold the module into the adapter. It's just the pins stick in there and then you're, you know, I don't know, use some Velcro or tape or I don't know what. So it's cheap and effective, but maybe not quite what you're looking for. When you spent $600 on your goggles, maybe you'd like to keep them looking nice. And that's where the British Drone Industries Digi Adapter comes in. Now, I'm gonna show you in a minute how this goes on. It is a, literally a two screw install and it requires no major surgery on your goggles. Compare that to the iFlight mod that I did on my channel earlier, where you install it, like you have to literally tear the whole goggles apart to get in. You have to solder to the power board and so forth. And that iFlight install does produce, let me go get it, I have, a, I have it. This is the iFlight faceplate and it looks pretty similar at first glance to the BDI faceplate. Uh, the main difference of the iFlight mod is it does produce just a little bit lower profile and more trim, take a look at the difference. The BDI faceplate definitely sticks out more. And the reason for that is that the BDI faceplate just has a standard module bay here that you can plug any module into. So it's not the iFlight by contrast, you have to get a special custom 3D printed faceplate for the module that you intend to use. So the iFlight mod is a little bit more trim, but way, way more work to do the install and way more risk of damaging your goggles. People say if you open the goggles, you void the warranty. Well, simply opening the goggles doesn't void the warranty, uh, but if you go in there and you break something, then it's not gonna be covered under warranty. And that's why the BDI Digi Adapter is so nice. The Digi Adapter does have uh, cables here coming out the side. And, and that's something that the iFlight mod doesn't have because the iFlight mod uh, the cables are internal to the goggles and solder onto the back of the AV input jack. Most people I think are probably gonna like this solution better because a lot of people are really nervous about tearing apart their $600 goggles and soldering to them. You can see here how I routed the cables. These cables do come with the goggles. And it, did it took me a little bit of work to figure out how I wanted to route the cable. But this is what I ended up with, with the plug here facing upwards and zip tied to the head strap bracket, which is pretty secure. It's screwed to the shell of the goggles. And then the standard power cable plugs in here at the top. Keeps everything pretty neat and trim. Uh, you do have the option, of course, if you want to plug in a ground station or some other AV input, you just un unplug it there and you're good to go. In fact, there's even, I bet that's what this is. I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I bet that's actually an AV input plug. Wow. That's nice. It's probably a pass-through. Bet you that's what that is. I'm not, I don't know for sure. Now, as I mentioned previously, installation of the faceplate is very, very simple. You pull out two screws. You remove your old faceplate. You, you screw this faceplate on. Uh, the Digi Adapter comes with a set of longer screws that replace the screws that come with your DJI goggle. And it comes with all the accessories you need and you just uh, screw it on and you're basically ready to go. The fit is quite good. I found the fit to be, it just seems like it's really precisely made and it fits almost as if it was OEM. Now, one of the things I did wonder about when I saw this is how securely is it going to hold the Fat Shark module? And the good news is that they, it holds it really tightly. In fact, maybe a little too tightly. If you need to get your module out, I, I, you may struggle a little bit. 
But once the module goes in there, it's not going to be falling out while you're using it or anything like that. And this was a big concern of mine because duplicating the exact correct dimensions of the Fat Shark goggle module bay means that you can use any Fat Shark module you want with these goggles. Just plugs in just like anything else. Uh, but if they hadn't got the dimensions exactly right, they would be loose. It would look a little sloppy. And the good news is that it, it fits it fits really well and really securely. So I think for most people that the BDI Digi Adapter is going to be the best way to get a Fat Shark module onto your DJI goggles. Uh, it's not quite as slim as the iFlight mod, but it is way easier to install. And even as someone who's done the mod, I probably wouldn't do it again especially because this lets me change out the adapter anytime I want without having to go back in and resolder it, and that's not true of the iFlight mod. Um, it is expensive. It's 50 bucks. 50 bucks for this freaking faceplate? Well, I mean, if money is, is your concern, you can pay 15 bucks for this thing. Or you could try to 3D print something yourself, but getting the fitment exactly right is a real challenge, and since this is injection molded, that's probably where the money is going. Getting an injection mold made costs thousands and thousands of dollars, and then you need to sell a lot of it, the thing that you got molded in order to make your money back on the mold. So I do feel like, given the high quality of this injection molded faceplate, $50 is probably a fair price for it. Some people aren't going to be willing to pay that, but if you are, then there's a link in the video description. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Cuckoo Kaka, subscribe to my daddy.